Okay everybody, today we're going to talk a little bit about the shoulder and the shoulder is a pretty complex part of the body but we're going to try and make it a little simple. We're just going to go over today a part with just range of motion that somebody could do if they have just severe inflammation, sometimes bicipital tendonitis, bursitis or what might be called impingement syndrome and sometimes even after a surgery if someone's done arthroscopy. These are going to be simple range of motion things that help people get back some mobility. So here's a model of the right shoulder. Let me just kind of zoom in here, Mike, a little bit. Can you see it okay against the back? So this is this will sit right here like this, and this is your collarbone. This is the shoulder blade or the scapula, and then this part here is the humerus. So it kind of sits in here like this. The interesting thing about the shoulder and this whole complex part of the body is that this whole arm is only held on to the skeleton through this little joint right here, which is right here. So that's what holds your arm onto the skeleton. Other than that, the only thing that holds it together is all muscle. Muscle that's attached from the shoulder blade here, to the head, to the neck, to the mid-back in the spine, and then your rib cage, your chest wall. So it gives the shoulder a lot of range of motion, the most range of motion of any joint in the body. It's a very complex organization of muscle and how those muscles couple together to give the person an ability to apply leverage or throw or have force. So some of the things that go wrong with the shoulder, if you can zoom in here on this, here's some of the ligaments and capsules of the joint. And then underneath this shelf of bone is this bursa and the bursa is a pillow-like tissue that secretes fluid for lubrication. That helps things slide and glide a little bit more. So some people can get bursitis. Other problems are the tendon. The biceps tendon is right here and it fits in this nice little groove and it also becomes inflamed. And if we look at our model, that's exactly what the model is showing. So here's the shelf of bone right here and right under here is where the bursa sits. And then here's the biceps tendon coming right through the groove. And that's what can become impinged when the person raises their arm up. Swimmers, throwers, racket sports, or anybody that strikes something in an overhead motion, these are the problems that they would occur. Then further on into the shoulder, you can get things that go wrong with the inside part of the cartilage. There's a ring of cartilage inside called the labrum. Sometimes that becomes problematic. And then, of course, we have rotator cuff tears. You can see how big the ball of the shoulder is compared to the little part that it sits against. This ball is two-thirds bigger than this little surface area over here. So it makes the shoulder very unstable when we look at it just by the anatomy. So the things that hold it together are going to be the rotator cuff, and that's what gets injured in these types of patients. So we're going to show you some really simple range of motion things to do. So what we're going to do first is have you face this way. Come back here and put your arm up here. So, if you remember, we had a popular movie called Karate Kid and they had a wax on, wax off, and a paint the fence type things. These are all similar range of motion. So right now we're just going to ask the patient to go back and forth like this. And the idea here is that the table is supporting the weight, so it's an active assisted movement. It's active because he's doing it. It's assisted because he's not supporting the whole weight. So it's a back and forth, just getting some range back. It's important that the table surface be lower than the person's shoulder joint so that it doesn't irritate them by keeping it up too high. So we go forward and back, then we try circles. Okay. Circles one direction and circles the other direction. Okay, simple range of motion things, and these are called sponge exercises, basically. It's just like having a sponge on a table. Then what we do is we'll have the patient have their arm rested, and now they're going to bend forward like they're trying to put their chest on their lap. And what this does is it makes this arm into this range of motion here. And this is called external rotation. It's a very difficult range of motion to get back for some patients after surgery. This is one way to enhance that. So what we want to do, go ahead and bend forward, is when the person bends forward, we try to keep this angle at the elbow close to 90 degrees. So scoot back a little bit, now bend forward a little more. So 
So that's perfect range of motion. He doesn't have a shoulder problem, although he did recover from an injury, and now he's got complete range of motion. So come on back up. All right, so we had sponge exercises, some simple range of motion, and then the other thing we can do is something with a pulley. So this is a shoulder pulley, and it goes in the door, has a little strap, and now face that way. You go ahead and grab that, and then grab this, and so just pull right. So you're now you're actively assisting your arm also in a movement that might be otherwise difficult to do it all by yourself. Shoulder pulleys are really helpful. Now you can see his hand is down. If we turn this up this way, it makes that shoulder bone move, so it gives the tendon and the bursa more space. So go ahead and do it a few times with the palm facing up. That's usually a little easier for somebody. Okay, so the next part of the range of motion that we're going to do is called pendulum exercises. We did sponge exercises, so now we're going to add pendulum. And the idea behind this is that the patient supports themselves with their good arm. Go ahead and stagger your feet a little bit more and get your back a little straighter. And the arm is just hanging like a pendulum. And so the weight of the arm is tractioning the joint. That usually helps the joint feel better in, by itself. Now, what we don't want is we don't want the patient to be moving their arm by themselves. We don't want to actively have a lot of arm movement. We want to transfer the momentum from the body into the arm. So what the patient has to do is start moving their body back and forth using their hips and thighs. That's it. So move your arm with the momentum of the body and let your arm just hang like it's a wet noodle. So go ahead and, and a little bit faster and a little harder. Yeah, that's it. So what that's doing is the ball is just moving inside the joint and the tractioning of the arm makes the whole joint feel a little easier. Then the patient can try different movements. Try making a circle with your body. That's it. And transfer the momentum from the body into the joint. And then go the opposite way. So these are pendulum exercises. Okay, stand up. Okay, so these are going to be wand exercises, and basically it's just a wand or a pole from a broom, broomstick handle. So go ahead and grab that, both hands. So what the patient's going to do, let it down here, separate your feet a little bit. Now again, transfer momentum by swaying your hips into the arms and let your arms just sway and go along for the ride. That's it. So now just go a little bit harder and see if you can move your arms a little higher. Keep your head up. That's it. Good. Okay, so now if this was the injured arm here, turn your palm up. That's it. Now take this hand and push your other hand up. So go ahead and start swinging up. Good. So a person who needs more range of motion needs an assistance from a tool to get the arm up. And again, we turn that palm up so that we have less impingement of the bone here at the joint here where the humerus meets the acromion. You can also do some different things here with this. Go ahead and swivel your body like that. Yeah. Let your arms be a little looser. Just let them relax. Good. Perfect. Great. So those are wand exercises. So now what you're going to do, Neil, is put your palms forward and now just raise both arms forward all the way up. Good. So when someone's raising their hands up, we want to see the distance that it is from their head as well as high up it goes. Now come down. Sometimes what you'll see is a person elevate their arm. Go ahead and raise this one up and their shoulder starts to elevate too much before the arm gets much higher. So it creates a problem where the bone rotates too much. So what they have to do is they have to concentrate on keeping their shoulders back and down, and then as they raise their arms up, if this starts to move too much, then they have to reset their arm and then keep going up. Sometimes you have to watch yourself in a mirror to see that actually happening 
because it's not an easy thing when a person's been dealing with a painful shoulder for a few months. Then the other movement would be going out sideways. So go out sideways. Same thing. And you want to see how symmetrical this moves, then down. And you want to make sure that as you're moving, you don't get this hitch like that. If we get that kind of a hitch in our range of motion, we have to stop and redo the whole thing because you're setting up problems with the different muscle firing patterns that occur around this whole upper quadrant. So that's what happens with range of motion. It's a simple thing to help somebody with, but it takes time and patience. So if you have a shoulder problem, impingement, or recovering from surgery, try these simple techniques and that should help. Thank you.